Hi guys, my name is Behruz. Welcome back to our Rust production tutorial series. In this series, we are going to add the signing and verification and the locking to our transaction. And to achieve this, we need to integrate our wallet module into our blockchain. Before we move on, let's explain why we need to signature and sign a transaction. For instance, if a user A then decide to send a 10 tokens to another user, let's call them user B, then another block is created for the next transaction in which the input references the original output with the 100 tokens in, in it. And the new output is created for user A with the 19 remaining tokens inside of it. And another output is created for user B with 10 tokens inside of it. In this case, the original outputs become spent. And now we have to unspend output one which is user A send another one which is the user B. Now let's say that user B send uh, 10 tokens to user C. Uh, effectively removing any tokens that user B owns, this will be create another block where we have an input and a single output because user B owns no more tokens. He doesn't get another output inside of the block uh, too and instead we just have an output which is unspent and assigned to user C. This idea of digital signing or digital signatures come into effect to guarantee that the data can't be modified while it's being transferred from one, send, uh, from, uh, from one user to another. And that's the data was sent by a specific sender and that the sender can't deny sending the data. So when user sends 10 tokens to user B, we know for sure that user send, uh, sent those 10 tokens and the 10 tokens cannot be modified while they are uh, in a transit for user B. And there is no way that user can be denied that he sent the 10 tokens to user B. In sum up, the signature guarantee when user sent a token to another uh, by the signature in the future they can't uh, deny that transaction. Okay, let's implement our signature uh, in TX.RS. First, we need to rename a script sig to signature and the type is going to be vq8 and also we need a pop key to in the future we need to sign uh, this uh, tx input then we rename uh, a script pop key in the text tx output struct to pop key hash then the type change to wake u8. In this file, let's create a method which will be allow us to sign and verify our transaction. So here we have a method called sign, which take in a private key, which is type ECDS a private key, and then it's take a map of uh, previous transactions where we have a hash of the transaction as a string which is a key and then the value is the actual transaction. First we want to check to see whether or not the transaction is a coinbase. If it is a coinbase we just return because we don't need to sign the coinbase as I mentioned before the why that we need to assign our transaction is through the actual inputs. We use these inputs to access the referenced output and that's how we sign our transaction. Sorry guys, I made a mistake and uh, we need to uh, put sign method to our transaction. So 
we cut it and move to transaction and implement it here. So let's scroll down here. Sorry, we need to import the hash map. Okay, let's continue. After we move uh, sign method to transaction, next we need to create, uh, how can I say? So we need to trade through all of the value inputs and make sure that they are valid. And we can uh, uh, do this by checking to see if our map con contains the input IDs, value input IDs, and then check the ID is empty, we then return uh, error because the transaction is not correct. After we check the previous transaction is correct, we need to create a transaction copy and uh, to do this, we, need, we are going to use a method which will be created called the trim copy. Trim copy is really uh, easy or simple. Uh, we need to create a two empty value input value output. Then we walk through to our value input transaction and we push a uh, new transaction input with the clone of a text ID and value out. And then we need to create a signature and public key with the empty array. Then we are going to walk through all value output and uh, we need to access the value and also clone the pop key hash. Then we create a new transaction and pass the idea of transaction with the clone and with the v value input and value output. Okay, after that, we need to walk through to value input, get the previous transaction, and then we need to, with the index input uh, ID, uh, to clear the signature, to make sure the signature is clear. Then we need to access pop key hash from previous transaction of value output. Uh, then we clone, clone the pop key hash and pass to the pop key. Then we create a hash function in the future to create, uh, create a new transaction ID to pass to the transaction copy ID because we can't use the previous transaction ID here to uh, create new one. So when we pass the hash value, uh, uh, when you create a new transaction, must be uh, ID must be unique. So we need to create a hash function to create transaction ID. Then the pop key must be empty because it's the new one. Then we create a ECDA, uh, uh, if I remember, ECDSA algorithm to uh, use the signature method to create a signature with the transaction ID and with the private key, then we return uh, as a vec to the signature. Then we create a hash function uh, to use it for create our transaction ID. So we use the bind code to serialize uh, with the self and we Use a SHA-256 to create a new hash ID. Okay, then we need to verify our signature. After we sign our transaction, we need to verify, create a, another method to verify transaction. All the structure of the verify is almost is the same of the sign method, but instead of uh, to return empty result, we return a boolean result, and uh, at the end of at the into in the end of the for loop, we just we need to use the ECDA algorithm and verify to check is the signature is valid or not. We use a verify method, pass the transaction ID, uh, pass the pop key, and also pass the signature of the value input. Then we return okay false if the verify is not valid. 
if the all the transaction is valid, so uh, signature valid will return true. Okay, after we've uh, created the sign and verify method in transaction, we need to create a few methods of uh, the blockchain which will be allow us to find the transaction, sign a transaction, and verify them. So in a blockchain file, we create a find transaction and pass the ID of the that transaction we want to find. We use the iterator to iterate our blockchain and get the transaction. Then we che check the transaction ID equal to the our ID we want to find, then return of the transaction. We just need to clone the transaction we find. If we couldn't find that the transaction with this ID will return an error to say trans transaction is not found. So let's create a method to sign a transaction. This will be take and transaction. Uh, then the private key, which is a ECDS, a private key. So we use it as a byte U8. And uh, so in this method, we use a, a not create another method to get previous transaction with the pass a uh, current transaction we want to sign. So well, in this method, first we create a hash map and walk through to our transaction value input. We find the transaction with the transaction ID of value input. Then uh, if we found, uh, we pass the transaction uh, to the map and then return a previous transaction. And then we create a verified transaction in our blockchain file to get previous transaction. We pass a, a transaction, then we use a verify method uh, from the transaction file to verify the previous transaction. So after we did some changes in the transaction input and transaction output, and also we want to integrate our wallet to our transaction, so we need to change few things, few things. And first we need to uh, add the wallet. Uh, that's the mean we want to find the wallet from the address and also we check uh, from and two addresses is valid. So we create a new wallet, we get the wallet from address and uh, if the address wasn't uh, exist, uh, so we return an error, then we check address for two addresses and then uh, if the address uh, doesn't exist we return an error so after that we need to access the wallet from address so we return a pop key hash as a clone because we need to uh, this pop key hash as a hash we use a hash pop key to use the SHA-256 SHA and RIPT 160 algorithm uh, to create a new hash. So we described this method before. Then we need to create few changes here in the, uh, after we find unspendable uh, outputs, we need to fix this error we uh, create an empty signature and also we pass a pop public key from the wallet to the pop key then here also we need to uh, another changes let's paste my code here so we use a mount and two address a string to tx output because we want to uh, assign a value to an address or send the tokens to this address. Then uh, we return, so we pass the from to the text output. And I think it's, uh, it's the same before. We don't need to change anything. Okay, uh, we need to another changes here. Okay, I'm uh, going to finish this video right now and in next video I'm going to continue work on our uh, UTXO and do some changes and also work on our CLI command to test our code. 
See you in the next video.